Good morning, this is Mission Control Houston. Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's edition of ISS Update this Thursday, February 7th. Commander Ford spent much of his morning continuing yesterday's work to load new software to the science experiments Express Rack 3. Earlier this morning, in addition to his regular two hours of workout, Ford conducted a periodic fitness evaluation. And later today, Commander Ford also will undergo a periodic on-orbit hearing exam. Ford also performed maintenance to the water recovery system, activating the low-low fluid transfer pump to transfer fluid to the wastewater bus of the system that converts condensation as well as urine and sweat into drinkable water for the station crew. And also later today, Commander Ford, an Indiana native, will take time out to talk to legislators and locals attending a session of the Indiana State Senate in Indianapolis. Meanwhile, flight engineer Chris Hadfield has been working with a science experiment known as InSpace 3 this week. Today, he continued to manage operations of the scientific investigation. InSpace 3 looks at the changes of physical properties of colloids and fluids in response to magnetic fields. This research has possible technological application and structure design here on Earth, including large-scale structures such as bridges and buildings to better withstand earthquake forces. Hadfield and Marshburn then worked together with Neurospat. Neurospat is a human body study that studies the uh, effect of gravitational context on brain processing through a uh, virtual reality session. At least uh, five cognitive processes are examined that include perception, attention, memorization, decision, and action. Mr. Shatner, this is uh, the space research vessel ISS in Earth orbit. And yes, I hear you loud and clear. How do you hear me? This is Chris Hadfield. Chris, I hear you loud and clear. It's such a pleasure to talk to you. Chris Hadfield took some time to chat with the original Captain Kirk from Star Trek, William Shatner, and also fielded questions from participants attending a uh, tweet up at the uh, Canadian Space Agency headquarters in Quebec. Flight engineer Tom Marshburn had performed a uh, periodic fitness evaluation this morning and then moved along to perform some maintenance tasks. Marshburn worked to remove and replace a uh, hydrogen sensor of the oxygen generator assembly. He also worked to conduct a uh, nitrogen cycle of the PFU2 valve. This is part of the total organic carbon analyzer that is used to perform quality testing of the onboard water supply. On the Russian side of the house, Russian flight engineers Oleg Novinsky, Evgeny Tarelkin, and Roman Romanenko divide their day between maintenance several science experiments, and also preparation for the arrival of a new cargo ship. In advance of the upcoming Progress resupply vehicle, Novitsky and uh, Romanenko practice with the uh, telerobotically operated rendezvous system and the uh, Z Zvezda service module that would be used in the unlikely event the uh, new Progress cargo ship experiences a failure of its Kurs automated rendezvous system during its approach for docking next Monday. The Progress vehicle that is now docked to the Piers docking compartment of the space station, Progress 48, is scheduled to undock on Saturday morning to clear the Piers for the uh, arrival of the new Progress resupply on Monday afternoon. Each of the crew members will then put in their daily two hours of exercise using the onboard gym equipment that includes a station bicycle, a treadmill, and an advanced resistive exercise device that simulates weightlifting here on Earth. The crew will then wrap up their day with that final daily planning conferences with the ground and is then scheduled to go to bed at 3.30 p.m. Central Time. This is Mission Control Houston.